not opened up to the public. So, you guys have any thoughts you want to share with that? My, I've shared my thoughts. I, I, I like number two. I mean, it has it all, as far as I'm concerned. I'm kind of on that same page. I'm, we can't we hardly go wrong. We're about all. I, I, I thought. Apart from I thought know. while we were discussing that, I think it's important to to maybe mention too on, on the names that submitted. She asked. There's 183 names submitted. I thought it'd be interesting to know that 65% um, of all names submitted wanted some form, shape, variation of Death Valley football. 28% of names submitted wanted some way, shape, or form of a memorial for Charlie Smith and Scott Bibler. Or the total of 93% of all responses and some variation of the two. And so, as a school board member and uh, respecting our constituents, I think it's important that we support the majority audience. So that's, sure. what, that's what we're here for. Um, There's 7% then of some other variation. And, and I think that's interesting to, to know. Um, my, my thoughts, I mean, when you hear that, I think number two, Kind of ties in both Smith Biller Memorial Field and the Death Valley football. And in our community, we have a deep heritage of Death Valley football, and I think it's important that we don't hide it, that we are proud of it. And I'm proud to say that I would support number two as well. I'd love to know if any, any comments from you folks. I gotta agree. We gotta go. I just Please. wanted to go off Dan and um, appreciate everybody's time because I know it seems like a simple thing, but I'm sure a lot of work went into it. I know Dan on the committee, Mr. Boggs and the school board. And I know a lot of people have talked to me about it, and I go, I'm not even on the committee or anything. So, um, But you're the mayor of Burkett. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure the school board's heard a lot of people from the community. And, um, People are passionate about the Death Valley, and they're also passionate about Charlie and Coach Bibbler, and they meant a lot to a lot of people. So, um, just from what I've heard, everybody's very thankful for what you guys have done. Coach, what do you think? I agree with number two. I think that hits home. Uh, those two guys gave a lot to this program, and uh, you know Charlie was a big part of the Death Valley part. And, Having a Death Valley football, it's more than just a field, it's a way of playing and it's a long lasting tradition that I think upholds. Number two kind of sums it up. Joe, are you going to chime in? Well, I mean, I tend to agree. I mean, the only thing I, the other thing I'd say, I'd like to see us do even a little more with a, a, some sort of plaque of recognizing even the other people who had impact on us. You know, maybe that's something to look at down the road, but you know we've had a lot of people who've had a lot of impact, or you know played football there, or passed away, and that may be something that as a, as a memorial field um, to recognize other people as well. That's a good point. Yeah, that's you know, a good idea. You know where we could put a, just a plaque where we can continually add names, names to it over time. Sure. Um, well, because you know we had a, we had a, we've had a lot of great players over the years and yeah, stuff, right. and um, you know, I grew up with you know Charlie was at my house about every night, and my dad were best friends and. I don't want to tell you some of the stories about Charlie. Um, I grew up with Scott, you know, and stuff, and um, he was a year younger than me and known him all my, li him all my life and stuff, and um, I think they would like, though, to see, you know, not just about them, you know, both of them were about the team and about everybody that played and everybody that was a part of Valley football, so I think looking at some sort of memorial that we can add to. Um, would be very respectful to them and to everybody else who's been involved. Sort of maybe look nice on the front of the uh, concession stand building there, something like that. Yeah. Would look nice. Legends are, yeah. Well, that's right now, we're thinking about naming the bathroom after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I? Burkhart. I'm not Burkhart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be Burkhart. Not what we do, he you know, retires soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Since I'm not familiar with things down here, can you give me the cliff note version of the Death Valley? The history behind it? Yeah. The Eric? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, Micah might be the best one to maybe do that. Well, I know, what I know is, um, they called the program Death Valley because um, 
when people came to Clay Valley or we went to play them, it was basically the end of their season back in those days. Um, you had to make the playoffs with a perfect record or sometimes you had it with one loss. And uh, basically whenever a team faced us, that was the death of their season. I know from 1975 was our first varsity game. We were three and two that year. Um, through 1980, the season opener, we, we had never lost at Death Valley and that's another reason it became known as that perfect record for all those years. And was there ever any banner or anything calling it that or that's what there, y'all called it? There was a sign. There was a sign up on the old press box. I forget how long ago it was. It's been up there for a long time. It fell down about four or five years ago in the storm. Yeah, and it just sign. said Death Valley, right? Right. I mean, so, and had a state so championship that, sign next to it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I think with, with that, it, everybody thought the entire school, everything was Death Valley. Where this is Death Valley football. It was a program. You know, it's yeah. a program. It's Death Valley football. It's not necessarily, yeah, it's not necessarily our entire school corporate, you know, the whole standing out there. It's, and I think that's important to note that, um, you know, the, the Death Valley is the football program that we're looking at, so. Yeah, because that's never been carried into the basketball gym or any of the other, you no, know, baseball. It's, 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 it's football always been The only time it was carried into a basketball yeah, gym was, in, was at Rochester. I think it was 82 or something. Uh -huh. They stole the sign, and uh, Coach Smith had his way of getting it back. I <laughs> 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 uh, sure remember that. that. Okay. <laughs> they went down and took it down. Basketball boys at halftime packed it through the gym, showed sure, it to uh, our crowd. They uh, sure did. Man. Rochester boys. <laughs> so it's been up since then, I guess. Yeah. Long, I don't even know when it was put up, but it was there a long time. So, you know, I guess for me, we're we're not even naming the facility. To me, it was already named. Right, yeah. Forty. We just talked forty some years ago. Yeah. Charlie Smith named it. Right. The program named it. Right. You know, and we're just carrying on traditions the way I feel about it. Yeah, we're it, representing the exactly movement. right. We're just upholding what he started. Well, we'll move on to number three approval. Do I have a motion to? Approved number two. I'll make the motion to approve Smith Biblical Memorial Field, home of Death Valley football as the football. Right. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second. That's Aaron seconds that. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Now one thing I'd like to discuss and and Mr. Lee, maybe you can you did you was the one doing the talking at the distinguished alumni, was you not? Was that your voice on the speaker? On the yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you did an excellent job. We were trying to figure out who that and was. And I'd like for you maybe <laughs> work with Mr. With Mr. Lucan to come up with kind of the philosophy of what Death Valley means and, and maybe even some about Coach Smith, Coach Bidler. And the history and the facts. And to have you, I, don't, I love Terry, but I don't want him to be the one to <laughs> on this. I mean, I'm sorry. Alders. I just thought you did an excellent job. Because <clears throat> Terry's done this thing with alumni, and nothing wrong with that, but you just presented it very well. And I'd like to see you make some announcement. I'm hoping we're going to do this maybe before the game. I believe the plan is Friday night uh, prior to the start of the game. Now, Aaron, Aaron brought up a good idea. I think he emailed you guys. I don't know if you guys got a chance to I see just it. Read it. Just um, of having that covered up down there where the kids sat in the end zone, <coughs> and then us having. Down yeah, have them covered up with the tarp and everything, and then having him read what, and then having the students student unveil, it. unveil it down there in the end zone. And of course, it'll actually end up being mounted on the students or football team. Well, we thought either or. Or either or. I mean, I don't know if you how have the football out. team out there or not. But that's it. Right. Burkhardt asked if I would have the team out there for when we unveil the name. So he, he called me today and asked that we could be out there like five minutes early so that we could do that. So, I mean, I think it might have them all out there. Would you yeah. be all right with the student body and be a part of it? Beside the student body. Or do you want just the team? To I almost play? think, you know, the football players watch the unveiling of that, of the student body. I don't know. If I'm on that football team, I want to pull a rope. Or pull a rope. <laughs> I mean, that's good. It's up to you guys. That's true, yeah. too. You can do it that way. Absolutely. I don't I'd say let the football team. I mean, okay. It's their field. Yeah. Their let them do it. That's, that's perfect. Let's let them do it. We'll have that down in the end zone down there by the student body. Sure. And they'll sit there for that night. 
Is this on a board or is it just a... Can it be mounted like that? We'll have to find a way to prop it up so people can see it. But okay. It's big and it is heavy. I can find the two by four. bring your lift over. Yeah. You can jack that thing up. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I think we can figure out a way to... So I know what I we can hook it on the back of your parachute plane. Yeah, <laughs> right over here. Why, right? Yeah, I do have the lift at home. We can take it down, man. I can get her up there for the We can stick it up in the air. Oh. Could I ask if the football field prior to this had any kind of signage on it? I mean, I know that. Not the field itself. Did it have a name before? It, it was always called considered Death Valley. There was a sign that said Death Valley. Where the old press box said it used to hang up there. Okay. There was and never. There was never. It was never official. official. It was just something that it just that hung. Yeah. Yeah. By H.C. to plywood was painted, and it was Death Valley. And yeah. so it's always been known as Death Valley because of Coach Smith. And, and, Coach and why did why y'all choosing to name it now? Well, back in 2015, shortly after the accident, we knew that there'd be probably some people who want to name okay. something after them. And we had no policy, so we talked to state to see, and they said that you should have a policy on naming any facility right. so that there's no okay. issues. So we came up with this policy of three meetings, bringing the community and administration and school board together. So that was approved by the board in, I think, December of 2015. So October, November. It was in the fall, early winter. And I think it has a lot to do with since the sign had blew down in the storm years ago, there's just ne there's not been okay. a name on the field for many years now. And okay. I think that's kind of what prompted okay. this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was December 7th, 2015. Maybe to go along with with you having him and you know, the dedication type kind of thing, is there something out there with the speakers that the, uh, the whole distinguished online, if you're over by the concession stand on the opposite side of the field, you can't hear anything. Really? You can't hear That's the first I've heard any complaints on the speakers. If that was the case, they didn't have something turned on because if the speakers are on right, you can hear. It should be up here fine. Well, that's not what I thought, but I think uh, if we're going to do that, everybody should hear. Well, I agree. That's what I'm saying, Dan. I didn't know that because I've, I've been over there and I've, I've heard them last year. And Last game, last time game was my first game this it, year. Was it did seem like the distinguished alumni was it was quiet, and somebody might have flipped the switch that turned on the soccer speakers and switched off the stadium oh, speakers because they, they switched from one set to the other. So it might have got switched accidentally. I said, I can use my outside voice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, is there, is there a possibility of you rounding up some of those? Players from the state teams. The That's teams. what I would. Well, Dan, we yeah, probably know the best since he was on it. <laughs> yeah. We did when I was coaching. It took quite a bit of time, but we got about ten of them to get come to practice, and, and it was, it was the 25th honored. anniversary and stuff. It was honored. It'd be tough. I mean, but it, they were honored yeah. a few yeah. years ago because yeah. yeah. I remember Shannon yeah. and Oswald. Yeah. Yeah. We will. Yeah, I know Mark Shireman and um, Joe Harder were there at the last yeah, game and got to see the press of I, mean, I didn't know if you had some contacts. I don't have a lot of their contacts. They were on the team. I know I probably get over a few, but they weren't the main players. Right, right. But they got the But if we get a few of them, you know, maybe they could be the ones watching the current players and be able to, you know. Carol, can you put that in the article? Sure. That all members from the the 79 team are invited to be out on the field. Well, no. don't just don't just include 79. Or what the, the I would say previous era. players. I'd yeah. say all previous players. All previous players. Yeah. Are welcome sure. to be a part yeah. of the um, unveiling of the Can you reach out to Steph and, and the Smiths and Mr. Box? Do you have there? I mean, I can get a hold of Michelle if you do. I, I told Wayne. Okay, when Wayne started doing this. I think I'll put a bug in her ear and let him know. Yeah, they're they're going to be ready. Because I know I talked to Michelle and she was excited. And thought What time is the game? Seven, seven, seven o'clock. And what time would you want players? Previous players? I'd say it works out for your schedule. 6.50 is normally when we were going to be out there. We normally get out there about 6.55 for 
the uh, introductions, but we're going to be out there at least at 6.50. I'd say, I'd say they'll show be there by 6.30. I'd say no. if they could be there at 6.30 so that it can be organized somewhat. Okay. 6.30 at your final offer. That's it. <laughs> There's a lot going on that night too, right? I mean, we got homecoming. Yeah. We got the curling. We got barbecue. We got there's all kinds of barbecue. Sounds good. What time? We'll be there. Yeah, it's it's right. Right. Oh, I got a little bit. I'll just say something. Yeah. Bring your board pad. Yeah. Do you know what else is going on? So they can eat. It's. I got a couple times. Yeah. This is also going Weather's supposed to be nice. Yeah, this is supposed to be Anything else, Mr. President? Yeah. This is got copies. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. President? Boy, I think we've got it, unless you do want to. Well, you yeah, hearing this is a bad tour, but uh, I guess for the sake of the RTC folks, we have Friday night, um, or I guess it's all day Friday, right? Is that correct, Aaron? Uh, what does this start? 5.30 to 9. To nine. Okay, 5.30 to 9 at Tiffany Valley High School, drive for your school. Um, if you come out and test drive a Ford from Curlin Ford, so Curlin Ford, they will donate $20 to Tiffany Valley High School. Um, I think there's a maximum of $6,000, so we can get the full six last yeah, year. We get yeah. yeah, we can let a lot of folks test drive a vehicle. And that money, I believe, is going to boomerang backpacks again, so it's a, it's a good cause. And, it's a good partnership with Curly, so I'm not driving a Ford. Or two, right? yeah. They don't have to buy one, they just got to drive one. If they can stand to drive one, that's all they need to do. I don't know if you have a second one, they could have only 10 bucks worth. I don't know if that's the case this year or not. But at least, we you know at least it's a point back there. It's a good deal. <coughs> I believe we're adjourned, adjourned for the, in the evening. Right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.